Hey gang, um, long story here today, I'm trying to decide how much of it I want to get into. Well, um, I did a wedding last Saturday night, and you can go back and watch me do some of that if you want at Daily Art Adventure 379, and uh, <laughs> trying to decide how much of this to say. Um, I've done about 90 weddings, I think. I'm not quite at 100 yet. And um, up until this point, I've honestly been able to say, under a lot of pressure, painting live, short time, lots of noise and people talking to me, I've never bombed, bombed a wedding painting yet. Until maybe Friday night. <laughs> So, needless to say, this was a very rattling experience to my soul. Um, I'm trying to figure out why I bombed. Now, okay, good news, and especially if my client watches this video. <laughs> uh, a couple things. One is, by the time I finish, this will be a gorgeous wedding painting. It's just that it wasn't gorgeous at the end of the reception. Um, by the time most of the people were walking out, the, the groom looked halfway good and the bride looked 15 percent good 85 percent not good <laughs> so and i'm not sure what was wrong with my brain that night um it just i just wasn't seeing anyway now after people walked out uh, in my i will say this much in my own defense i'm, I'm being pretty humble with you today um i continued to work for about an hour so by midnight i really had a a good portrait of the groom and a well-on-the-way portrait of the bride, but everybody was gone. <laughs> so <laughs> I figured, what's the, what's the use in continuing to struggle when nobody's there watching me? So in my own defense, I did nail the groom, but here's what I did. And, and I think, I've been, I've been thinking about this all the weekend, unless I'm forgetting something, I believe I can count on one finger <laughs> that's literally the number of times where I've ever done this done what you say well when I get home at about 1 15 on Saturday night Sunday morning I walked in with this canvas and I took a rag dipped it in turpenoid gamsol and wiped wiped all this off literally uh, two and a half, three, three and a half hours of work. Uh, took it all the way back to the acrylic underpainting. So, first of all, three cheers for acrylic underpainting. Because I feel like the, the, the bones of this painting, it, it's, a, it's a good composition. This is going to be a good painting. So, and, and of course, you, I couldn't do that if, I, if it was oil all the way down. But because it's acrylic, um, and I didn't wipe off the whole thing, just, just the middle part. But... The, the portraits completely. Now, even though I had the groom, I was a little concerned about the ratio sizes of, size of his face. And since I didn't have the bride, again, as I was driving home late, late, late in the night and thinking about it, I just thought, I think it'd be better to start, so to speak, with a blank slate. Not completely blank, again, because the, the, the acrylic underpainting is showing me where the figures are going to go, and I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, but again, that rattled me pretty much. Now, uh, just a little bit of history for what it's worth. So again, I'm being pretty honest with you. This is, this is a real artist's life. Uh, if I was proud and arrogant, I wouldn't show you any of this stuff because I'm showing you a screw up. Well, I mean, what's left of it. I did about, and you, one of you could go back and count. It was about five or six weddings in a row, maybe more, seven or eight maybe where I was doing a grid during the reception, right? I would do a grid, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, but then the last three or four weddings I did without a grid and feel like I really nailed it. So there you go. With a grid, got the job done. Without a grid, got the job done. Now, two, two weddings ago, just for what it's worth, in case some of you are keeping track, I did not finish the painting, but... That was an exceptional, it was a very short reception. I mean, I got started very late, and it was kind of a short, short reception, so I finished that one here at home as well. But I didn't, I didn't bomb, I just didn't finish, because uh, we ran out of time. This one, I feel like I really kind of bombed. Um, 
People were nice. Everybody said, oh, that's like, especially toward the end. And by the way, it was wonderful. I had a chance to talk to the, the bride's mother, kind of important person at the wedding, and, and uh, say well, I was, that I was not finished, her daughter, and uh, that I was going to take it home. So all is well as far as my relationship with the customer goes. So here I am. It's, it's Monday afternoon, uh, and I have done a grid. Now, I'm not going to make you watch this whole process, but I do want to talk. I've talked about this before, but I want to talk to you. I, I'm figuring, I, I am assuming that all of you, if you're, especially if you're an artist, you know about the grid method, right? Right. Okay, well, I want to give you a couple really important tips in case you ever need to use the grid method. Okay, first of all, I want to talk about a tool and I want to see if you can zoom in if I can zoom in far enough so that you can see this app right here do you see that it says artists grid tool it's got a little cherub creature so you touch that and well there's actually the grid that I was working on so if you don't have that tool on your phone that's a really good tool so that that's number one number two if you've ever done a grid then you know one of the biggest challenges is not getting after you get into it it seems easy at first then you go oh wait a minute um <laughs> you get lost okay especially the finer your grid is the easier it is to get lost you literally lose one of the things you can do is if you're doing it on paper is do one two three four five six seven eight nine and a b c d e f g you know just literally number label the, the lines to help you not get lost there's another way, however, and um, let me show this to you again. I, th I think you can see this, and that is that I, let's get it straightened up here. There you go. Can you see that the grid is in two separate colors? Yeah, red and white. So, and again, the grid tool does not do that by itself. I have to trick it. I have to do one grid. In this case, I do one grid in red. Turn off the app, you know, save the save the file, save the image, turn off the app, open it back up, and then open up so the, the image with a red grid, and then superimpose a second grid on top of that. Are, are you with me? So I get two exactly the same size, two separate grids, one on top of the other. That helps a lot. So again, I'm assuming you can see my painting here. You can see the white lines a little bit easier than the red ones, but there's a red grid and a white grid. So that helps me a lot. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out, and I can't show it to you on this phone because this is my older phone, uh, and I can't, th I did, this next part I did on my new phone, which is over here, and it's operating my camera right now, so I can't use it to, uh, to show you what's happening. But the new Droid phones, uh, in the ordinary, the camera that comes with the phone now, it allows you to draw lines. Not a, not a big surprise, right? Probably iPhones do the same thing. They allow you to draw lines on photos. So pretend this is, pretend this is my phone screen. Are you with me? But of course, I'm here at home in my studio with a computer right behind you guys. So I transferred this image to my Mac computer and went into Photoshop and, and printed it on my printer. But this is, all of this imagery, all of this was done on my phone. And here's the real trick that, uh, uh, again, when you, uh, forgive me for being blunt or insulting, but when you guys learned the grid method in ninth grade art, give or take, right? That's all you learned, right? Okay, there's two things to fix it. One is make it more than one color, I already told you that. The other is give yourself some diagonals. So from this intersection here to this intersection, that's going to help me a lot with this man's face. From here to here, here, do you see that? So I've done an X. You can do any number of angles you want. Uh, this is a lot easier to do on paper than it is, but I managed to do a pretty good job on my phone. All of that imagery was done on my phone. So that's that's just the, the two things I want you to know. If you want to use the grid method, well then stop using... I'm going to be insulted now. Stop using your sixth grade level grid and come up to graduate school grid, okay? Multicolor with angles. And you can get really, really, really precise that way. So then, of course, I have transferred the, these lines now. And when I draw on 
an oil painting. Where are my pencils? They're around here somewhere. Let me. When I draw on an oil painting, just for what it's worth, I use I use watercolor pencils. Is that sinking in? Not colored pencils, not a wax-based colored pencil, but a watercolor pencil, so I can rub, erase the lines with a damp rag, damp brush, damp Q-tip, something. So watercolor pencils is one of the tips. And uh, just one more thing, for again, for what it's worth. So, and then I, by the way, I, I calculated exactly how big this these grids were, and I blew this up on my printer, you know, again, in Photoshop, on my computer, behind you, um, so that it's a one-to-one -one ratio, which would really help me get the size correct over here. So, again, just another free tip. If you have access to a printer and Photoshop, by the way, if you don't have Photoshop, I, I'm, there's a million things I do with Photoshop, and it only costs me $22 a month, which is so worth it. You used to have to pay six, seven, eight hundred dollars for Photoshop. They don't do that anymore. Now it's a subscription, and to me, love it way better than forking out seven hundred dollars for the next Photoshop. So twenty dollars, twenty-two dollars a month, and it pays for it. Um, the other thing I want to mention, I'll, I'll show you this image just just to make the point. So these red lines, as you fully expect are all equidistant apart. So one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch. Roughly. Got it? The lines, uh, and I hope you can stick with me here for a minute. The lines on my canvas are not equidistant. Are you with me? Up here, like the first two, three levels, they're all the same. And then as it goes down the page, these grids, like if this is I'll just use rough numbers. If this is one and a one and a quarter, one and a quarter, one and a quarter, two and a quarter, two and a quarter, two and a quarter, then it's two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two and three quarters, two and three quarters. Are you with me? So the boxes get longer, not wider. No, 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 no. They're all the same because I don't want. So what's going to happen is when I transfer this image to this canvas, these figures are going to get elongated, not up here. So their heads are the right ratio but their legs are going to get lengthened, which again is part of that idealization of the human figure, which I think as portrait painters, most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, we want an idealized figure. So we don't want, even though I'm seven heads tall on a good day, are you with me? But if I do a portrait of me, like a $50,000 oil painting portrait of me, by golly, I wanna be eight, Eight and a quarter heads. <laughs> Are you with me? And again, you can take it too far. Like even John Singer Sargent, one of his most famous paintings of this, I forget. He's real famous. You just look him up. Um, uh, there's one woman where she's like ten and a half heads tall or something like that. And some people laugh at that, but most people don't. Most people go, that's the way to do portraits. I think that's a little exaggerated. It, it, that's maybe the most exaggerated of all his portraits. That's why it's so famous. But he knew what to do. He knew who was paying him. He knew how to make people look good. And, you know, it's not... I don't think it's flattery. I think it's just... It, the best word is idealization. It's an ideal view. We, we view each other... You know, if I'm standing in the right way, when I'm dressed good <laughs> in a tux or, you know... I think most people who don't know me, don't look at me and say, Man, he looks kind of short and squatty, don't you think? I'm, by the way, perfectly average. Five, nine and three quarters is as average height as you can possibly get. Um, I don't think, if, if they like me, they remember me slightly taller than I actually am. Are, are you with me? I'm having a hard time just explaining this. But if somebody gives you a pleasant vibe, you actually, in your mind, you process them as slightly taller than they actually are. No insult against people that are shorter. <laughs> But if you're doing a portrait, if you're an artist, you want to elongate them, idealize them just a little bit. So anyway, that's how I've done, done that now. Again, and I, because last Friday doing this bombing at this portrait, it's kind of freaked me out. Yay! <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go all the way back to, look at this. I'm going to hold this pencil like this, and I'm going to do a bunch of tongue drawing. You know what tongue drawing is? 
<laughs> it's that. The death control grip. And you stick out your tongue. The sticking out your tongue part is optional, of course. But I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to hang up from you guys. I'm not going to let you watch me do this because it's way too detailed and way too boring here. I'll zoom in as far as I can. And uh, I am going to draw the heck out of this man and this woman. Are you with me? And, and am I embarrassed to do this? Well, yeah, of course I am. What do you think? Did John Singer Sargent ever do this? Heck no. What do you think? Am I as good as John Singer Sargent? No. <laughs> I could think of a whole bunch of people that I'm not as good as. A whole bunch of them that would never have to do this. And that's kind of embarrassing. I'm exaggerating slightly to make the point. Are you with me? Uh, if you're a mere mortal, as I am a mere mortal, then welcome to the club. Do what you need to do to get the job done. And you know that I'm speaking, what's the word, almost tongue-in-cheek. Um, there are days, there have been many days, and for, in 2012, five, six years ago, was for me, was the year of the portrait. And I tried to do one portrait every day. I failed, but I did over 200 portraits. And they were not masterpieces, they were quick sketches. And about, on 90% of them, I can capture likeness. On about 47% of them, <laughs> half of 95, I'm about 40%, almost half of them, I can capture a quote-unquote perfect likeness. The other half is like, well, you can tell that that's President Truman, but something's a little weird with his nose, head, ear, mouth, forehead. You got it? That's how good I am. That's how good I ain't. So, that again, that's just me. Um, if you're, and I think what I want to convey to you, especially those of you who are struggling portrait painters, yeah, welcome to the club. Welcome to the struggle. Welcome to the journey. I'm saying to myself, be patient with yourself. So I did 90 paintings in a row where I hit a home run pretty much 90 times in a row. And then I struck out Friday night. So I'm, part of me is kicking myself. But the more sober-minded side of me is going, oh, come on, Nelson. You hit, you hit 90 home runs in a row. You are immortal after all. But I'm still trying to figure out what did I do. What did I, and I'm going to get better. I'm going to get better because of last Friday. Are you with me? Now, I don't mean I'm, this portrait is going to come out, of course. After I do all this drawing, it's going to be pretty easy to paint, right? Um, oh, no, no, no. Let me, let me change that. Let me throw in a caveat <laughs> again. Anybody who's tried grid, even the grid with the di extra super diagonal lines in it, it still doesn't get you all the way home, does it? It still doesn't turn into a home run. So I, I want you to know, if, you, if you're if you an artist and you try the grid method, and you do it, do it, do it, do it, you draw, you, you tongue draw as carefully as you can, and you get all done, it's like, something's still a little wrong with his nose. Yes, exactly. Welcome to the club. So this only gets you, but so close. Got it? So there you go. But I am going to stick with this till I get it perfect. I'm going to deliver to my client a beautiful portrait of the, the bride and the groom. I'm a little disgusted with myself that I'm having to do it this way. But that's that's what I do. Um, I just did my taxes this morning, by the way. My, I have a wonderful tax accountant who files a, an extension for me every year without me even asking. How good is that? <laughs> he doesn't even wait for me to tell him, oh, by the way, I'm going to be late. He just files late for me. <laughs> so even though it's late May, I haven't paid my 2017. I'm saying this because, doggone, I made more money last year than I thought I did. It's really good news, bad news. Bad news, I've got to pay a bunch of money to the government. Good news is, doggone, I made half decent money as an artist last year. Woohoo! And the reason I'm saying that is not to brag, you know, sound braggy, is to say, how do you make money as an artist? The answer is, you work your buns off. You work hard. You work hard. You work hard. You do what needs to be done. And I think, and that's what you see me doing here. It's like, I wish I did. it wasn't so bad that I had to use a grid today. By the way, for my next wedding, I think I'm going back to the grid method. Friday just really freaked me out. So uh, next next wedding, next weekend, I'm doing a wedding. I'm, I'm going to use a Greek right there. I, I use a grid right there at the reception. Okay. I hope that's encouraging. <laughs> I hope me 
exposing myself to you and telling you all my weaknesses, warts, and failures will encourage you to keep on. You're not the only one who messes up. We all mess up. And by the way, again, I, I know I'm rambling on. I'm going to quit here shortly. But, you know, one of some of the biggest big dogs in America, Daniel Green, Nelson Shanks, uh, 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 Everett Kinsler, right? Big dog portrait painters. Um, okay, I've named three names. I won't tell you which one, but I have watched one of those paint live. And he did a perfect job once. And I watched him paint another one. Well, not bombed, but he didn't get it right. One glance at a portrait that he did, I went, oh my goodness, he got this wrong. This distance from here to here. Nothing, and I'm not going to tell you which of those three it was, but those are three big dogs, right? And uh, that's always been a little bit of encouragement to me. Because they go, wow, if one of those, Nelson Shanks, Daniel Green, or Everett Kinsler can mess up, whew, okay, they're human just like I am. So again, just encourages me to keep on working. Do, do, what, you, do what you need to do. If you need to use a grid, if you need to project, and you know, one of my other heroes is an illustrator, um, Drew, what's his name? Most famous movie poster artist, maybe uh, right now of all time, Drew. I'm drawing a blank. Draw Drew. Drew drew a blank. <laughs> D-R-E-W. Um, he did most of the uh, Indiana Jones movie posters. You can look him up. D-R-E-W. Drew. Indiana Jones poster. You'll find him. Uh, he traces everything. Trace, 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 trace. He doesn't even try to do it by eyeballing it. Now, I know as well as maybe you do that when you trace all the time, your brain shrinks. So, poor Drew. He probably couldn't, can't draw himself out of a paper sack after all his years of tracing. But that's his choice, and he made a lot of money, got really famous, being a really good artist. That's one option. Norman Rockwell, I, I'm rambling still. But uh, years ago, when I moved to Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, there was a man in our North Carolina Association of Designers and Illustrators, David, I'm drawing a blank. This is 35 years, 30 years ago. He was an old guy maybe my age, and uh, he had retired. He was an illustrator from New York. He s helped found the S New York Society of Illustrators. The Society of Illustrators started in New York. He helped found it. He and his personal friends with Norman Rockwell. Personal friends with Norman Rockwell. And he talks about visiting Norman in his studio one day, and uh, he walked in on Norman when Norman was tracing a photograph. <laughs> and Norm. According to this guy, Norman like quickly grabbed this thing and like stuck it behind his chair and pretended that he wasn't tracing a photograph. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> so there you go. Um, use whatever means you have to. Now we've talked about this before. Why don't we trace all the time? Because when you trace all the time or grid all the time, your skills deteriorate. So for every one time you do this, you need five times just to try to draw without anything. Okay, I've rambled long enough. Thanks for watching. Leave some good comments and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks. I got some drawing to do. Bye-bye.